What's going on, Sartorialist? Welcome back to The Holsey Style. Today, I had the pleasure of interviewing Dan Kostaki, who is the co-founder of The Urban Ties, a menswear company that offers ties, pocket squares, scarves, and other accessories. We had a delightful conversation that covers a range of topics. We talked about Dan's personal journey with menswear, how in particular he became passionate about ties, and we also go on to discuss the future of menswear in a post-pandemic world. I hope that you guys greatly enjoy this conversation. Let's get into it. With that said, could you, for those who might not be aware of who you are, tell us who you are and what it is that you do? My name is Dan Kostake. I'm a co-founder of the, the Urban Ties brand. Uh, we are making ties in Romania, uh, handmade ties uh, uh, using uh, fabrics from uh, mills and factories from Italy and the uh, UK. And uh, we have uh, an online shop for the moment. We are selling them online. Uh, where is your uh, company company's... located again? It's in Romania. So uh, um, here in Bucharest, it's our headquarters and uh, the manufacturing of the ties is here too. So we are making the ties here. We, we are buying the, the, the fabrics, the silk and the wool and all the other fabrics that we use. We buy them from the uh, suppliers from Coma and Macclesfield in UK and we make the ties that ourselves here in Romania. Okay. And in addition to ties, uh, what other products do you guys offer? uh we have uh, some other accessories as well so we have some pocket squares scarves uh, some leather goods and uh, some shirts and uh, the plan for for next year is to to expand a little bit this range of products all right uh, so before we talk about your and i want to want to spend some time talking about the urban ties how the company developed and where you see you guys are headed but before we do that i want to discuss your personal relationship to menswear so could you tell us how it is that you became interested in menswear going back as far as you want to go back and then further, <laughs> how it is you became specifically interested in ties i assume that Ties are very important to you since the name of your company is mm -hmm. Ties. Well, so uh, uh, until until high school, I, I'm not sure I, I wore a suit at all. So uh, I, I was part of the uh, hip hop subculture, rap subculture. I I, <laughs> I wore only baggy jeans and uh, the stuff like that. And uh, I, I didn't uh, see myself in a suit. But after finishing high school, um, I uh, started working in real estate. And uh, there, you know, the, 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 the mandatory dress code is wearing a suit, having a suit at work. And uh, also a tie. So uh, I started with uh, uh, buying some suits, uh, some ties. Of course, the, the first years, I, I didn't have a clue about what I was buying or how should I match them. It took me some years to, to develop, you know, a, a relationship with with uh, with this. And uh, uh, at one moment, I I, I become interested in uh, you know uh, learning more about the relationship. You know how how to. I think this is a usual quest for 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 the regular guy. You you wear you wear the clothes every day at work, and uh, sometimes you you ask yourself. Okay, but what if the, these pants don't go with uh, this jacket? Or uh, what about this tie? Maybe it's not the perfect match for the shirt. It, you 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 start being interested on your appearance, and um, that's what I did. I started digging the internet, more and more information how to match the you know the tie with the shirt, how to match the pants if you with you go with an odd. Uh, uh, jacket for and the, the the pants you're not going for for the suit in that day and i started the uh, i started uh, digging the internet and um, not uh, not long time after that i i found the uh, uh, the you know the the visual inspiration uh, first i think it was uh, scott schumann's blog the sartorialist everybody knew that blog at that time uh, 10 or more years ago. I think that he was one of the first to, to promote this uh, streetwear and this uh, 
uh, all, all this uh, direction that the massware took in the 2010s. And um, uh, so I discovered I discovered Scott's blog and all, um, all this uh, all these uh, pictures from uh, from uh, PT Warm affair with the uh, PT peacocks, <laughs> you know, dressed in, <laughs> in bold uh, in bold color suits with the I don't know yellow or bright blue or whatever they they were, and I was very intrigued about their not necessarily that. I thought I would wear that, but it was interesting for me as a as a movement. I I was very interested about what was happening there. You know what what was all that about, and I started, you know, researching and found out more about the fair, about all what was happening there, and uh, then I'm not sure at what particular moment, but. I, I discovered that not only I enjoyed this, you know, it wasn't a hobby anymore. It was more like something that I had inside me all the time, but it, it was like a, a hidden dimension, you know, something that it was in myself since I was a little kid. I always, I always was interested in, uh, you know, choosing my clothes and matching them in a way, but not with proper education and not with you know with the back background of knowing what to wear but the interest was somewhere but then there's another uh, you know programming that we are uh, <laughs> as a man we are used to 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 be uh done you know the fact that Okay, uh, when you are a kid, as a as a as a boy, you sh you shouldn't be interested in clothes that much, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And for for me, this was something like, I don't know, something that I put back. Okay, I'm not I'm not interested, and in, I'm not that interested in clothes. But uh, I I discovered with with all this uh, the information that I learned and all these uh, 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 things that, that I've seen online, I discovered that I'm very passionate actually about clothes and uh, I might want to do something for myself in that in that area in this business and uh, this luckily um, was at the same time that I was uh, I was uh, uh, discussing with uh, with a good friend of mine to to start uh, the business together and actually I, I didn't have the <laughs> I, I didn't trust it myself that much he was the one who who said, you're you're very good. You 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 know a lot of information. In your you're quite because I already started doing some experiments and uh, buying new clothes and matching them in new ways. So he he uh, noticed that I have a improvement in in this area, and uh, he suggested to me, look, you. It seems to me that you are very good. Let's let's try it and do this. Let's try and start a business in this uh, domain. And um, this was basically this is how it, the, our company started <laughs> with my passion and his uh, his trust in my in my passion in my in my know how. So that's very interesting. I love how you described it almost as a hidden dimension in your childhood, the kind of passion mm -hmm. that you had for clothing. And I think that's an important point that maybe a lot of people in menswear don't really consider. And it might be an impediment for a lot of people to even get involved in menswear in the first place. I know that when I started to dress well, one thing that some people suggested or started to think anyway was that I was too feminine. They would almost ask, well, are you gay? Yeah. You know, <laughs> and it's like, yeah. so I think you, you make an important point there. There's kind of like this impediment to dressing well or being concerned about your appearance and the association between that and being broadly feminine yes so it's 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 more like, more like a cultural or social thing okay you're a boy you dress with whatever i don't know you you shouldn't uh, take care of your appearance too much because you're a boy and that's how we are learned from from childhood and if we are mm, deeply we, we have this inside and we are passionate somehow with about the aesthetics about the colors about all that it's something that you can express when you are a little kid because you do what you're told, you know. 
So when you grow up, you either uh, see that as a, as a part of you and accept it, or you just you know go go on like that and you don't make progress in that area. But luckily for me, it took me almost ten years to to discover this passion. But when I discovered it, it was very uh, it was a very pleasant feeling, you know, to 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 see that I can finally do something that I really really enjoy every day. <laughs> yeah, you're probably expressing. We might say a more authentic version of yourself. So it seems like you took a, a lot of pleasure in that. Yeah, yeah. So it's not uh, like uh, they say, uh, do something that you like, and you won't have to work another day in your, in your life. Something like that, more or less. It sounds like a cliche, but I, I believe it's true. Since I started this business, uh, I, for me, uh, it seems like I didn't have a work day in my life. So that's how I'm feeling. I, I just do continuously. I just do something that I like every day. So that's the feeling. <laughs> <laughs> so you discussed a little bit about your, how it is that you became interested in menswear broadly. So you said in high school, you more or less wore baggy clothes. You were part of the hip hop subculture and that transitioned yeah. <laughs> when you started to get involved in menswear and you started to, what we would say, you know, suit up. But I'm kind of curious, like what made you specifically passionate about ties in particular? I see that you were passionate. You became passionate because you're interested in putting combinations together in terms of outfits, mm -hmm. but how did you specifically hone in on ties or rather, why did you specifically hone in on ties? Well, for, for one reason, uh, I, al I always was attracted by, by the beauty of, of the ties, the, the intricate patterns, the, 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 the shapes, the colors that they, they can have, the fabrics uh, themselves. But um, 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 besides that, we, when we decided to, to, to start the company, uh, we... We thought what would, uh, because we, we started, as I told you, we started uh, as a small business between friends. It was not some big investment from uh, venture capital or an angel investor or something like that. We, we, we have only our money to, to put uh, in the game. And uh, we, we started thinking what would be the, the best product to, to, you know, to, because my view is, uh, if you start small, it's better to do one uh, uh, one product, but do it perfectly or almost perfectly. But instead of doing ten products, but bad, you know. So we we uh, my philosophy was, was okay. Let's decide on one product and start with one product, but let's do it our best version of it. And uh, the ties were the, the the easiest choice because it uh, there were easier it's a it's a handmade product indeed but uh, you don't need the the, the same uh, uh, for example if you want to make suits or uh, uh, or shirts or shoes or everything you you need the even not a big factory but a small one you need you need the people to work you need the machines you know it, the it's a big investment Manufacturing, because that that's that was our our idea from from the beginning to to manufacture, not to buy something from others and sell it with our brand or whatever. And um, um, our ambition was to manufacture this product, and uh, the tie was the or, or at least seemed the easiest choice, you know, the, the, for because we thought. It's it's not that uh, hard to make a tie. It's it's rather easy. Look at it. It's it's a piece of cloth. It's it's a piece of silk. It's sewn on sewn on the back. Uh, it's it's not a big deal. But um, of course, we 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 had the, our share of lessons after that because it took us almost six months to to have a tie that <laughs> I would wear today, you know, because um, there were a lot of challenges for, for us, uh, for us and for the people who uh, we uh, employed to, to, to make the ties, the, the, the workers that we asked to make the ties because they, they uh, in, in Romania, we didn't find any anyone with experience in this particular area 
So we, we, we talked with a lot of uh, workers, who, tailors, sorry, with a lot of tailors and a lot of ladies who um, worked in the manufacturing industry all their, all their lives and they were very uh, precise with their hands. They, they liked the, these handmade jobs, but the, they didn't know how to make a tie because they didn't make a tie in their life before. So it, for them, it was a challenge, okay? I could make you a tie, but I'm not, I don't know how. So uh, I might try to make a tie, but I don't know. And uh, we had uh, we had uh, our challenges in the beginning, but uh, as I told you, after six months, I think we we managed to to have a viable product. <laughs> <laughs> so, is there a particular period of ties that you are interested in? One thing that I noted about the urban ties is I was looking through your inventory. So, you guys have mm-hmm. a lot of vintage style ties that seem to be from different periods. I've seen some from what seemed like to me. And this is my inexperience. Mm-hmm. So if I say this incorrectly, please correct me. But it seems like there's some tie designs that are specifically from the 90s. And then you have mm-hmm. some that are from, for example, like the 60s. It seems like you guys have a very interesting blend of the kind of tie designs that you have. But for you personally, when you started out your company, uh, was there a particular period or a time when ties were made that interested you or fascinated you? Uh, not, not necessarily for, for myself, uh, it was, a it was an interesting period because, uh, uh at first uh, I associated ties with, uh, with silk. So for, it was more than, uh, a discovery of new fabrics. This was the, the area that we worked on more, um, so we we started with we, our preconception preconception was that silk is the you know the main fabric for ties when you think when you think of a tie you think of a silk tie but then we discovered that you can also have wool ties you can have linen ties you can have cotton ties you can have wool silk melange ties all, all that in between uh, all these uh, interesting fabrics and um, um, the, the first two years, I think we, we experienced a lot in that particular area. We tried making ties from all these fabrics to, to see how, how they are made, how, you know, all, all the, all the process. But, um, um, to, to answer your question, uh, yes, I, uh, I must admit that I'm uh, particularly fond for, for, I have uh, fondness for this, uh, vintage designs these vintage patterns. So yes, I, I, um, uh, I choose uh, many from <laughs> many of them from the archives of our suppliers. Okay. So that's the next question I was going to ask you, like, where do you get the ideas for the designs in the first place? Is this something that you and your business partner create together, or is it just something that the, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't know if they're termed manufacturers, it's something that the manufacturers already have, and you're able to choose from how, how does that process work? Uh, yes, we we, uh, we don't design the uh, these patterns and uh, in house. We 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 basically work with uh, with um, some suppliers from uh, Como and Macclesfield. They are very they have very big archives, like thousands of designs, and uh, uh, from one hundred years ago until now. All the all the periods that you said the 90s, the 70s, the 60s, the 30s, the, and uh, if you have some ideas or a direction for the collection, you can pick from the from their archives any any design. You can change it for if you want some different color schemes. If you want to, you know the flower from this particular pattern to be yellow instead of blue, or any change that you want to make, they can make it and. Uh, this is how it works. We we usually go uh, take a couple of days, go there and uh, pick uh, pick the designs for the new collection. That has to be pretty fascinating to be able to sit there and look through the archives and see how ties and tie designs have changed over time. Yeah, it's very interesting. Uh, 
uh, and it's for me it's the most beautiful part of the of my work to to go there and pick new designs for for our collections uh, on the other hand it's quite exhausting because you stay there all all day long and you see uh, hundreds thousands of designs and you have to you have a number of uh, uh, designs that you have to pick at the end of the day and it's a very <laughs> exhausting process you know to 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 to, to make the right decision to, to I usually uh, go with my guts so if I see something that I like from the first second it clicks I pick it if I don't I don't come back afterwards and uh, choose it so I, I used I used this uh, this kind of feeling from the beginning and it worked it works uh, the the people when uh, and this uh, this is kind of this is a kind of uh, uh, trust that you have in your instincts um, after a while because like I've told you in the beginning I was <laughs> very I was not very sure that uh, I I make the right choices and I choose. Uh, some nice patterns for our ties and uh, i was i wasn't very confident but all the people that uh, saw our first ties they they uh, told us okay you have very beautiful ties and it was a process you know to to build my trust on this and now after almost eight years uh, i have no issues with this i just go pick the things that i like and i'm confident that other people will enjoy them too so this is it <laughs> So I have a question about you. You described it as being an instinct. You go off your intuition, your gut reaction. So when yeah. you are choosing the particular tie patterns, where do you think that instinct comes from? Because it seems to me like you're saying that it's something that's had to develop over time. Is it coming from a place of, well, I think that this people would like this particular tie design and that it would sell well? Or did, do you have a more kind of, so to speak, artistic approach? Like you think, oh, this is just a beautiful tie. Yeah, it's it's more it's more uh, like the second one because I, it's more like a, an artistic approach. I, if I see something beautiful, I recognize it as beautiful, and it's like seeing a painting or another art object. You see it, and it's just beautiful. And uh, if if I start, uh, it's it's very tricky because I also I was. Uh, uh, sometimes at the beginning, I was uh, I was trying to think about, uh, like you said, I was trying to think that what would my customers say about this design? Would they like it or would they not? And it's a very tricky design. And if you start that process in the mind, it's it's never ending, and you can't make your mind. You know, you stay there like the whole day, and you can't decide because it's not your decision actually. You. You 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 are trying to think for somebody else, and it's if it's not your decision, it's very hard to pick that design or not. So I go with my decisions, and I I assume that that the others will the, like 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 you said, it's like art. I if I like something and I consider it to be art, some people might consider it too. So this is it. <laughs> this is my approach. Yeah. It would seem like it's almost a difficult, if not impossible task, if you took the approach that I first mentioned. Like if you're trying to guess what it is that people will like, as you as you hinted, the decision is entirely out of your hands. You're trying to guess, well, this is what people would like, but you don't have any access to their minds. There's no way for you to tell one way or the other. So it seems like you've stuck to your instinct and just your Instinct for beauty, if you will, what you find to be yes, beautiful, yes. what would look the, good on a man. This, this, uh, this would be it. The, the, an instinct for beauty. I go for the, for the beauty of it, and then I hope some others recognize it too. Well, I will say that is reflected in your your tie designs. That's one thing I really, really love about the urban ties. You guys just have such mm -hmm. a unique and beautiful set of ties. It seems like Thank a you lot very of. Much. <laughs> A lot of Thai companies, they've kind of lost that. Mm -hmm. We'll just use that. You will use your phrase, the instinct for beauty. And it seems like there's a little bit more concern and with marketing and trying mm -hmm. to sell as many ties as possible. And of course, they're a bit, you know, most Thai companies, they're a business, so they want to make their profit, which yeah. is understandable. But in the process of that, it seems like they've lost that that artisticness. Do you notice that in other Thai companies? 
uh, I don't follow that many uh, uh, Thai companies. I follow just the ones that I consider to be representative. We took our um, share of inspiration from a couple of them when we started because they are big established brands and they are doing a great job for uh, you know 20, 30 or even 100 years and uh, they are from uh, from Italy, from UK so they have a great tradition there and um, uh, we were inspired by them but uh, we, uh, as you said we want to, to have our own path and just to follow that beauty of, from our point of view what were those companies, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, well, uh, so I think uh, I first uh, I, my first contact with was with uh, Drake's and uh, Marinella from Napoli, and uh, they they did uh, an amazing job. And uh, uh, afterwards, I I started uh, seeing some other brands, some new brands that were doing a great job too. From um, uh, for an example, Shibumi, from uh, the brand from uh, F- wait, the, the, they started in Germany, but they moved to to Firenze uh, some years ago, and uh, they, they they did a great job too, and some others as well. So, uh, um, but the main, I would say, the the main uh, inspiration came from from Drake's and from uh, from Marinella. So this would be my my two top choices for, for Thai brands. <laughs> yeah, that's a good place to get inspiration. I really, really mm-hmm. love Drake's ties as well, although they're quite expensive. So I don't, I don't own one yet. I will, I will in the future, <laughs> but I would say they, they are one of those brands who have stuck to their, so to speak, artistic roots. Their, their tie, yes, yes. uh, their tie designs are very unique, which I, I greatly appreciate. Yes, and also also Marinella, uh, they they have their own identity. Um, you know, if you see Marinella tie, you recognize it almost immediately. So this for me is it's very important when when you uh, when you have a, an artistic message to the world when you want to 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 uh, share that it, it's important for people to recognize you without seeing the label. You know. Uh, like even for for uh, for a singer for for uh, if you think in, in music industry if you hear a voice a particular voice you know that that's the one singer because he has a unique voice and a unique style or if you listen to metallica for example rock rock music or a, any big brand any big uh, uh, music uh, group Will you will recognize it in a second because they have their own identity and that's art from my point of view to have such a well-established identity. Yeah, I know exactly the sentiment that you're talking about because I love Jimi Hendrix. Are you familiar with the American musician Jimi Hendrix? Yeah, yeah, I I know him. I know him. Yes, of course. (laughs) Yes, he's very unique as well. Yeah, I love his. I love his guitar style, and I haven't listened Mm -hmm. to his whole oeuvre we might say so i haven't listened to all of his songs but Mm -hmm. i guarantee you that if somebody put one of his songs on and i didn't even hear his voice i would still be able to know that it was Jimi hendrix just based on the way that his guitar playing is so he has that we would say an artistic sense as you were suggesting Mm -hmm. his voice so do you think that you have developed out your voice in full or do you think that you are still striving to find that particular unique artistic voice we are not there yet. I think we are still striving, but um, it's it's a work in progress, and it's it's hard to to say when you get. I think it's more about the process in itself than the you know the end of the journey. So if you are climbing the mountain, it's all about climbing it, not about okay. You reach when you reach the top, you reach it. But it's, I'm not not saying that we we are there definitely we are not there yet but uh, uh, i'm enjoying as much as possible this uh, this journey to to you know to finding our own identity and uh, style and sense of beauty like you said yeah do you think that <clears throat> excuse me 
do you think that there'll be a point in the future when they'll, you know, someone will be wearing your ties and you'll have that same sort of sensation where it's like people will know that that is your particular tie. That is the urban tie. I know I can tell by the design <laughs> and beauty of the things. I will love, I will love that. I will love that. And, um, uh, I had, uh, I had some, some feedback from, from uh, customers that, uh, some of them even uh, told me that uh, uh, if we have any collection, they want to, to pick one or two new designs, not because they would necessarily wear it in the near future, but just because they love the design so much and they, just, they want the, the, the ties in their wardrobe. So it's like, it's like I said, it's more like buying a, a, a small painting or something like that. You, you want it to have it in your house and look at it and then say, okay, it's beautiful. I have it there. Maybe I won't wear it that often as as much as often as I wore it in the past, but still, I have it there, and it's it's a beautiful little piece of art. <laughs> yeah, I think you kind of teed up my next question there because I was going to ask you why it is you believe that it's important for men to wear ties. It. Uh... First of all, from my point of view, uh, um, a suit without a tie uh, doesn't look complete. The, the the whole the whole look it's it's somehow incomplete, and you can make it work in some circumstances. But now it get uh, it's it's not uh, it's uh, it's the rule. It's not you know the uh, to 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 not wear a tie. So. Mostly, uh, the, the the people choose not to wear a tie with with their suit. But um, so um, 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 other way to, to think of it is to 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 see the tie for what it is. It's a it's a uh, an accessory that doesn't have a, a, a role, um, doesn't have utility. You know, uh, or more than uh, more than an aesthetic one. For, for for the for the whole ensemble, uh, the jacket is you know for give, for you not get cold or the shirt is the first layer on your skin. So all our clothes have a, a utilitary purposes, but uh, the the tie doesn't have utility in itself. It's just a piece of silk or wool or uh, that you put on your neck, and it looks good with the rest. So it's it's our way for for men. I think it's our best way to to express our uh, personality, our uh, style, our our emotions in that day, our our feelings, because of the, the the most of the business suits are black or navy or uh, gray, charcoal gray or brown, and it, it, you, you, you can't express yourself that much in, in, in that area because you have these plain colors and you, if you want to, to have a small, uh, a small uh, you know, uh, a little bit of color, or you, can, uh, you can have it on your tie. So this is the place where we can, we can play with a little bit. So you would probably say it's important for men to wear ties because it's the, or at least one of the ways that they can like uniquely express their personality yes, yes, and the way, way that they dress. A, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a way of expressing you, yourself. So this would be the, 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 from my point of view, the, the, main, uh, the main utility of the tie to express yourself. Mm -hmm. And it's very if, interesting if you are wearing you a beautiful tie, if you are wearing a beautiful tie, you express your uh, your sense for beauty and your appreciation for beauty. So. so it's interesting that you bring that up because I was having a conversation last week or the week before that with an Italian tie maker, Stefano Cao. Are you familiar with Stefano Cao? Yeah, I'm, I'm, we are friends. I know him from, from, from Pitti Uomo. Yeah, we are friends. Ah. We, we, ah. we talk on the internet. <laughs> Uh, he, he, we were talking about 
in particular 90s tie designs. And mm-hmm. I was asking them what, why there were particular colors in use in the 90s. I think we were we were focusing specifically on like the use of till. And he was talking about how that's not a color that's so much used with ties in the present. And one of the mm-hmm. reasons he suggested that might be is because in the 90s, it was very, very popular for people to wear, he said, I think he estimated about 90% of people would wear suits that are either navy gray or black so this was the one accessory a tie that would allow them to bring color into the outfit and to as you suggest here express personality Mm -hmm. yeah so i found found that fascinating i agree with him on that sure (laughs) yeah so um with that said uh you started your company the urban ties seven years ago is that correct Yes, yes. Seven years okay. ago. And you just initially started making ties, but now you've kind of expanded it out to, you said you have shirts, uh, scarves, yeah. I believe, pocket squares. Pocket squares and some uh, leather goods, but uh, these are not made in-house, are made by a partner here in Bucharest. I so see. It's, it's more like a private label uh, collaboration. Okay. So where do you see your company, the Urban Ties, going in the next five to 10 years? Do you guys see yourself expanding into different products that you offer? Or do you think that you're going to focus in on one particular product and try to expand with it? Where do you see your company going in the next five to 10 years? Uh, um, At first, I I see ourselves... uh expanding a little bit and uh, this uh, range of ties and focusing on this product as i told you my my uh, my philosophy is to to start with just one uh, one product and make it perfect and afterwards going for the other products as well uh, i'm not convinced that we reach that level yet so with with the range of uh, designs that we we can offer and uh, uh, all that. So our, our focus will definitely be the next couple of years will be on ties uh, for sure. And uh, of course, uh, in parallel, we'll, we we are looking for uh, for expanding the the range of products. Uh, if you ask me where where do I see us in five to ten years, uh, probably. Uh, a one-stop shop with curated items, uh, you know, not not a not a, a very large range of products, but uh, a very curated and uh, particular uh, designs for those. Um, maybe a couple of jackets, maybe a couple of sweaters, maybe. But mm, mm, focus would be on the quality, not the quantity of the designs. So this would be more like a boutique shop. I see. Not a, so, very, not a large, not a very large store, but a more a small one, but with very unique and very nice quality products. So you said that you want to expand your inventory of tie. That's a little bit surprise ties, excuse me. That's a little bit surprising mm-hmm. to me because it seems like you guys have a pretty vast array of ties. So where do you, how much do you want to expand out your, your tie designs? Like do you have a particular number in mind? Not, not a particular number. Uh, right, right now I think we are somewhere around 200, 250 designs. Uh, maybe, maybe double it in a couple of years. I think that would be sufficient. From from one point, uh, uh, if you have too many options, it's it, it's uh, it's like my like my story uh, from from the suppliers. If you go and see thousands of designs, it, it's a little bit exhausting. With the, with the buying decision, it's the same. If you if you see one hundred ties, okay, you can make your you can make up your mind really quick. But if you see four or to five hundred, you really have to be very specific on what you are looking for and you know just go there take it away because otherwise it's like a supermarket and you just take things and put it in your shopping bag and you, you enter for you know just uh, some bread and milk and uh, you you have a very large uh, shopping basket at the end you, you bought almost half of the supermarket so 
um, this uh, this I, I think um, makes easier for 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 the customers to to choose from. But um, like I've told you, if we manage to double this uh, this number of designs uh, in a couple of years, I think we, for us would be enough. Uh, so, do you guys plan uh, as of right now? You guys just have an e-shop, is that correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. We have you guys. Do you guys plan on having a brick and mortar shop? Do you plan on setting up anywhere? Uh, we did have, we did have a showroom in Bucharest for four, four years before the the pandemic started. But um, uh, when uh, when the, the the pandemic started in March uh, two thousand and twenty, uh, things got pretty ugly pretty quick. And uh, we decided uh, we have a we had a lockdown here in Romania for two months, a complete lockdown. Nobody was allowed to uh, exit the house unless going to buy grocery and stuff like that. And uh, we decided to to close uh, to close the showroom, and it was a good business decision because uh, it would otherwise it would cost it. It cost us a lot of money to 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 have it open for nobody. Basically, for in that period, the landlord wasn't uh, necessarily understand very understanding of the situation. So, uh, it was uh, the the good uh, business decision to to be made. And uh, of course, right now we are uh, expecting to see how the things will go on next year because a new variant appears for three months or so. Uh, Whenever we think the the pandemic is is over, we, we see on the news that another variant showed up, and uh, we'll have another lockdown or stuff like that. So we we are hoping to 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 see the end of the pandemic next year, and uh, we'll we'll see from that. We, we, ideally, for us, uh, yes, it, it would be nice to to have a small shop here in Bucharest because um, our customers here love the, the experience of coming uh, to, to, to see the, the Thai's life, to, to feel them, to, to wear them, try them. And uh, it's, a, it's a nice uh, experience in itself to, to be able to pick a product physically and not just see a photo of it. And uh, so uh, for, for our Bucharest customers, yes, I am uh, seriously thinking of uh, opening uh, another uh, small store or showroom, or we'll see. And of course, if the things go well, we'll think about expansion too in the next years. So I'm ignorant here. What is the difference between a showroom and a shop? Uh, uh, show, showroom, it's not a uh, shop, it's retail, you know, it's, it's retail. You, you have it open from 10 to 18 to, to 6 PM or, and you have a salesman there and it's always open. Uh, mm -hmm. you have a window for the, for the shop, the showroom it's, uh, it's, uh, um, can be a house or an apartment in a in a villa that is uh, um, by appointment only. You can come there if you want to to see the designs and buy something. You can make an appointment, come there, see see the products. It's a more uh, 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 personal experience to say so. You you come there and you are the only customer. So this uh, this is the showroom. For from my from our point of view, your company is stationed, so to speak, in Bucharest. Is Bucharest mm -hmm. the capital of Romania? Yes, yes, it's the biggest city and the capital of Romania, of course. Okay, so I was going to ask you what the dressing situation is like there. I assume because it's the capital, menswear is probably quite common. Is that correct? Mm, not, not as much as we would like to. Um, the, the dress code uh, relaxed uh, um, a lot in the in the last years, and uh, I'm not seeing the, the, too many men going to in a suit uh, to work anymore. So uh, usually uh, people uh, here uh, dress up for for an event if they have to go to an event or. Of course, there are the business people who have meetings 
on a daily basis and they uh, dress up. But otherwise, the the, the blue collars. Uh, the, I know that's a term that we, it was used in, in America. The the white collars, the blue. Collars. So the middle middle uh, management and uh, small management workers. Then they don't wear. Uh, uh, a tie for sure that don't wear not even a suit anymore to work they go with uh, jeans and shirt or um, sweater this kind of look so now the, the people here in Romania are not uh, not not very educated in in this uh, particular area because uh, uh, every time I go to Italy or France or some other country from Western Europe. There it's, uh, I see, uh, besides the, the tradition, I see that uh, uh, men find a pleasure in dressing up for, for smaller events, like going to dinner or, you know, going out with uh, their uh, ladies. It's, 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 a, it's, a small, it's a small pleasure to put up, you know, a, a sport jacket. Okay, maybe you don't wear the tie at night, you, you lose it, but still, you have a you have a jacket, uh, and uh, that's the thing that here in Romania you don't see all the time. So here we we have to 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 work and educate ourselves for sure on this matter. So this trend for I mean we might broadly describe that as more casual wear. Did you see that happening before the pandemic? Yes, it, the, now with the pandemic, it it, it, it certainly grew, uh, but uh, yeah, it, it was before the pandemic. Uh, it was a trend before the pandemic too. So uh, uh, I uh, I didn't see the Romanians as very well dressed. Of course, speaking uh, not, uh, we have our exceptions, but uh, I, I didn't see Romanians to. Uh, being very interested in uh, in menswear, in classic menswear, uh, in the last ten years. So this this would be an area where, we, as I told you, we have to educate our, ourselves, and we need more examples of people dressing well and uh, uh, teaching others what this means besides the okay the the first impression that you make, because it's not that superficial as many would like to believe it's more to that. <laughs> I absolutely agree. Um, the next question's a difficult question, but I wanted to try to get a sense from you what you think dressing is going to be like post pandemic. And I know this is very difficult as you've already mentioned, because it seems <laughs> like every, you know, three months there's a new variant and we don't know what policies our governments are going to institute, but I've seen online that there's been, kind of like two frames of mind. I've seen some people suggest that after the pandemic, there's going to be something like an explosion in dress because people are going to be so des so desirous to actually get out and dress well again because mm -hmm. they're tired of, you know, working in their pajamas. But yeah, I've also seen people... <laughs> Yeah, but I've seen people also suggest that it's actually going to make dressing well less and less of a thing because people are going to become more and more accustomed to wearing more casual pieces. What is your opinion on where menswear is headed, say, in the next five to 10 years? Uh, I, I, I kind of agree with the both lines of thinking. So, uh, like you said, both would look similarly uh, um, uh, likely to happen, but uh, what I think it would really happen is um, um, the the trend that is uh, started with the pandemic with the work from home. Uh, it will grow, and the uh, people and the companies will realize that it's not necessarily to go to to the office anymore like they used to before the pandemic. And this uh, will change a lot uh, the, uh, the dynamic between the companies and the workers. And uh, then, of course, people will have more spare time because if they work from home, they can manage their own, own time and their uh, projects and everything. They can manage it in other ways 
compared to the to office work. And uh, if they have more spare time, they um, um, they with they will go in two directions. Those who are not interested in menswear will not be interested in <laughs> menswear because they're not. That's their nature. They're not interested in how they dress. And those who were interested or had a little bit of curiosity in this area before the pandemic, of course, like you said, uh, the pandemic uh, didn't let them manifest that, show, show that to the world, were, were those beautiful clothes they have in their closet, and they will, uh, they will start dressing up again. So I, the, the, the society will go in two directions and everyone will do what they please, you know, what everyone will, will choose uh, its own way. But um, what I think it will be changed, it will be changed the fact that uh, uh, until now, uh, some people that uh, needed to wear suits to go to their jobs won't, won't need to wear them anymore. So that will change because if you don't go to the office, you don't have to, okay, if you are from home, maybe you put a sport jacket if you have a board meeting, but otherwise you don't dress up in a suit if you are at home and you are alone and you're not passionate about it. Because I know people who are passionate and they wake up and they dress up nicely because that, that's what they do and it's their passion, but there are a, a few of them to say so. I see. So I also wanted to ask you, specifically if we're thinking about your company. And I suspect I know your answer to this question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. So in a post-pandemic world, where do you see the place of ties? Why do you think it's important for people to wear ties again if they weren't wearing them when they were working from home? <laughs> um, the, the reason would be the same, uh, uh, as I told you before, as a way of expressing themselves to, to showing uh, their style there. And uh, yes, it would, be, it would be interesting to see how many of them would uh, choose uh, to, to wear a tie on a uh, daily basis if they are not necessarily going to work. But uh, the, the, the dress code for, for the... Uh, that all the events and uh, all that uh, formal area will not change. I believe in the near future. So we all will have the events and the weddings and all the formal stuff that uh, is going on. So the uh, men will will dress up for those. And um, otherwise, yes, there there will be some people who find pleasure in uh, in wearing beautiful uh, classic clothes, and they will definitely choose to to have a small piece of art uh, at their neck. <laughs> so the reason I asked that question is I've seen some people suggest that the tie is going to more or less die. So I've seen articles yeah. like this since I first got involved in menswear about five years ago. And as somebody mm -hmm. who is a lover of ties, somebody who has well over hundred ties that makes me a bit sad <laughs> but um what is your opinion on this do you think that ties are going to sell less and less do you think that they're ever going to go so to speak extinct as a species of accessory what, what's your opinion on this uh i don't think they um the sale the sales the, the total the global sales uh, will uh, definitely decrease uh, more or less, but uh, I don't think the that the tie uh, will going extinct uh, uh, because it's a it's a very important piece of the men's wardrobe, and uh, the only way I see it going extinct is uh, if uh, we we have a dramatical change in men's fashion in the next uh, years, and we'll we'll wear uh, you know spacesuits, co <laughs> space yes, you know like. <laughs> they depicted in the 70s in the movies we have some uniforms with a badge here and if you go to if you go to those uniforms yeah we'll we'll uh, we'll drop the ties and nobody will wear them again but otherwise as long as the the suit the shirt and the shoes the formal shoes are in the game the tie will be too so that's my that's my point of view 
Yeah. Won't go extinct. When, it, <laughs> when I when I read articles like that, it's just fascinating to me because it's like, well, how long has the tie been around? Like if we're thinking about the history of the tie, like t- dating back to, you know, the first kind of cravats. We're, we're talking about like yeah, 1700s, uh, right? So it's like this, more, it's been more in, than uh, two, 200 to 300 years. So, yeah. And in the in the uh, modern way, as we know it, it has more than 100 years. So. Yeah, it won't probably going to be around extinct. for a long time. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> okay, so I think I've covered the questions that I had for you. Is there anything that you want to say to the viewers before we go? Well, uh, I want to thank you for the opportunity to to, to chat uh, today, and uh, I I hope that uh, many of them will uh, discover us uh, in this way and will um, uh, find uh, our designs, you know, as we see them ourselves, as little pieces of art that you know need appreciation. So for those who don't already know, how can they find you? Where can they find you on Instagram? Where can they find you uh, on the internet? On the Instagram, we are The Urban Ties, just like that. And uh, um, our website is theurbanties.com. So if they Google The Urban Ties, they will definitely find our Instagram page and our website too. All right. Well, I just want to say uh, thank you very much, Dan, for coming on and speaking with me. I know that it's getting late there in Romania. (laughs) What time is it? Uh, Around nine o'clock (laughs) p.m. Ah, so you're ready for a glass. I'm going to dinner right now. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Well, thank you very much for coming on and enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, We'll be talking to you You soon. Thank thank you very much. We'll see you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.